Dan is sick today and has no voice, so I'm handling the voice over on this video. Do you know the 1 in 60 rule when dealing with VORs? What it means is that if you're 60 miles away from a VOR station and you're one degree off of a radial, you're one nautical mile away from that radial. The closer you are to the station, the shorter the distance is between that one radial, so at only 20 miles, you're one three of a mile off. Can we have some fun with this in the aircraft and maybe get a little smarter about situational awareness when dealing with VORs? Here we're flying west of the Craig VOR in Florida, about 60 miles away. We're going to demonstrate what the 1 in 60 rule looks like in our aircraft. Let's set the VOR into NAV 114.5. We're close to the 270 radial tires which we'll set on the VOR head. Over on 4 flight we're going to show this radial. First we'll enter the VOR identifier as a waypoint. Then we'll enter the 270 radials off the VOR at 60 miles distance. We're approaching that point. What we want to do is fly perpendicular to the radial so that as we fly through the point, we stay the same 60 miles away from the station, not getting closer or further away from it. So we'll fly a northerly heading. We're going to be timing how long it takes to travel from one radial to the next at this distance. So we pull up the 271 radial at the same 60 mile distance. If we use the ruler, we see that the distance is one mile. This checks out with the one in 60 rule, right? One degree deflection at 60 miles distance is one mile. How long will it take us to fly this distance? It depends on our ground speed. Our indicated airspeed is 100 knots, so assuming true airspeed is close to this, and tail or headwinds are small, big assumptions, our ground speed will also be 100 knots. How long should it take us to travel one nautical mile at 100 knots? You can do the math or use your E6B to find that it's going to be 36 seconds. We fly by our 270 radial point with the needle centered and start timing. The clock shows 15 seconds past. What we're going to prove out is that we'll be at the next radial, one degree of deflection on the VOR head, 36 seconds later, which will be 51 seconds past on the clock. On this VOR head, one degree of deflection is when the needle goes from the center to the edge of the donut. When we get there, we see that, yes, we've traveled about 36 seconds, and our position on foreflight confirms we've gotten to the next 271 radial. So that's what the 1 in 60 rule looks like. Let's get ourselves lost and fly towards another VOR. This time we'll use Brunswick VOR. What we want to show is that if we know our ground speed, we should be able to tell not only the radial we're on from Brunswick, but our approximate distance. The closer we are to the station, the faster we'll fly between one radial and the next degree up. Two big caveats with this. First, we have to know our ground speed. With GPS, this is easy, but not so much in traditional instrument flying. Here we've got the weather set so that our indicated airspeed matches our ground speed. Second, we have to maintain a constant distance from the station while we're measuring. This means flying perpendicular to the radial. If we are flying towards or away from the station, it will affect how long it takes to get Form 1 radial to the next. OK, so we're good and lost now. If we twist the OBS, we find a course of about 30 degrees will take us inbound to the Brunswick VOR, it's northeast of us. We need to fly perpendicular to it, so we want about a northwest heading. As we get there, we twist the OBS to find that we're passing through the 210 radial. As we'll be flying northwest, we'll be going into higher radial numbers. Let's use 230 as our pass-through point. Again, we want to fly perpendicular to that. This more precisely is going to be a 320 heading. Now, remember, when we were 60 miles away, it took us 36 seconds to go from one radial to the next. The time it takes us here will determine our distance from station. So the needle starts coming in. Before it goes center, we make sure we're on that perpendicular course of 320 degrees. We start the clock as we get to 15 seconds past. We'll look at the clock again as the needle gets to the left edge of the donut. This happens, and it's about 15, 20 seconds, much faster than the 36 seconds we had before. Just to make sure, let's get a really good read. Rather than look at just one degree of deflection, let's time two. We're going to start the clock when the needle gets to the first left dot, it's at 10 seconds past. Let's see how long it takes to move two degrees, which is where we'll be with the needle on the next dot over. We get there, 
and it's at 40 seconds past, so it took from 10 seconds to 40 seconds, which is 30 seconds total, to move us 2 degrees. At 30 seconds, it's a bit more than 20 miles. Let's call it 22 miles. We're coming through the 235 radial now, so we'll say we're on the 235 radial at 22 miles. Here's where we actually are, not too bad, the ruler tells us we were off by three miles. So is this just a party trick to break out on the sim on a rainy day? Probably. You certainly won't be asked to demonstrate it on a check ride, and it's of no real use in actual instrument flying. But the takeaway is that speed you move from one radial to another, or the speed the needle moves from full deflection through center to full opposite deflection, is related to how close or far away you are from the station. Use this information however you will, and check out instrument training you can really use at Flight Insight Ground School today, the link here or in the description.